guys, my name is Crystal. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome all subscribers, welcome new. If you like my videos, please press the like button and please do subscribe. Thank you for all your support. Alexa, what's the time, please? It's 5.53 p.m. Alexa, where am I located? You're at 7 Coys Road, Flat 5 Bix Apartments in Rochester, Kent. So let's go back to what I was saying before my phone cut me off. It has a habit of doing that. It cuts off when an advert starts playing. So it cut me off while I was speaking. So my mum orders a taxi under the name of Janestra. She uh, then goes to the French windows, makes sure the door shut, and my mum really slammed the door shut. And the whole building like shook. I was in the toilet. I just come out of the toilet. I just come out of the toilet, and my, my mum had just slammed the French window shut in the living room. Um, the taxi was due straight away. Mum said. Um, I got myself quickly ready, and I waited for the taxi. Then my mum decides herself to go to the lavatory. She decides to go to the toilet. My mum's elderly. She's getting on for 77 now. So she go, decides to go to the toilet. And she goes to the toilet in the dark. The light's not on. And the door's half open. And then she says, Dinesh I can't find my keys. I've, I've, don't take my keys. I can't find my keys. So, um, I'm looking for my mum's keys on the floor. I can't see them anywhere. I can't see the French window door keys. Obviously, she's got different keys to the front door and the French windows. So, hopefully, when my mum calls me back, which I'm sure she will, because she normally phones to check I'm okay, um, you, you know, she was sat on the toilet. Sue comes round to see my mum at six o'clock anyway. My mum... Sue does. My mum was completely all right, and um, she decided to go. She's done it many times before. My mum has when I was with my father. She decides to go to the toilet when the taxi is due to arrive. She decides to go to the toilet. So I did. She, she almost nearly accused me of taking her keys. I didn't take her keys. I had my keys in my hand. I had my door key, my fob key. And the taxi comes as my mum is sat on the lavatory in the dark with the door open. And, and I, I wouldn't have wanted to have brought keys to my mother in the toilet anyway, to be honest. It was like a scene out of a comedy show. There's my mum sat in the dark on the toilet. She claims to have lost her keys and then a Chinese taxi driver turns up in a taxi. Um, he gets out of the driver's seat, asks if I want my bags in the boot, which I do. I've got my red backpack and two bags. So the two bags go in the boot. I hold on to my backpack because my money's in there to pay for the taxi. I get in the back seat of the taxi. Um, my mum's okay, of course she is, and Sue goes in there at six. Um, she was fine. My mum's done it a lot of times, gone to go to the toilet when, when the taxi's arriving. Gets in the back seat. Um, the, it was a Chinese guy, he was very, very polite. We get held up in the upper part of Luton Road, going down the Luton Road. We get held up by temporary traffic lights. So that eats a lot of money. We get held up and there's a woman comes out of a block of flats with glasses and brown, brown hair, short like mine, with a dog, a, a, a bigger dog on a lead. I think it was white, spotted and white. So she's coming out of a block of flats down Luton Road with her nose scrunched up, holding a dog. I don't get out of the taxi. I have got a heavy backpack and I've got two bags full of, of, of stuff. I've got a bag full of wet washing. So 
soaking wet washing. And soaking wet washing is heavy, weighs a ton. So I couldn't get out of the taxi and walk. There was no way I could do that. My, the taxi driver talked to me for a bit. He was really, really nice. Um, I noticed that the taxi had a hole at the bottom and it was stuck with black gaffer tape and the car, the taxi itself was rattling down the road, rattling and he was struggling to keep hold of it like the other driver the other day. I don't know if it was the same taxi in fact. Then his phone goes off, his phone goes off and he's got Bluetooth on, Chinese taxi driver, he's got Bluetooth in his ear and he's having a conversation with a guy but he does say to me, is he okay? I said yes yeah, fine because he asked me you see, he asked me if it was okay to talk to his um, mate in Chinese on the phone because they were having a conversation in Chinese together. So he was having a conversation with somebody while he was driving but he had Bluetooth in his ear and I was just looking at the people out of the window that was walking down the pavement. School girls with no tights on, so they had school girl skirts and it had been raining, it was cold, they had no tights or socks on so they had bare legs. Um, there was a woman dressed in a really posh suit that didn't look like she belonged in Chatham. It was really, really posh and different, like you'd find out of a magazine. She was walking past um, Lansdowne uh, Court Way, down Old Road. Um, so the car gets stuck in like quite heavy traffic. But when we approach Gas Road, the, it looks like the road's cut off. And he says to me, um, I, I can drop you off here and you can walk across the road. And I'm thinking, I've got two bags and a backpack. You know, I've paid for a taxi to take me to my address. So he cuts off down a road, turns round and goes the other direction to, to Gas Road. And he says, I, I said, I don't want to be dropped off at the, the train station. I said I want to be dropped off where I live and it wasn't closed off completely, they were letting cars through. So with patience and a lot more money than I pay for a taxi normally, it was £15 exactly, the taxi driver drives me to Biggs Apartments where I get out of the car in my yellow coat and my orange beanie hat and come into the flat by myself wearing a red backpack, carrying two plastic bags and I check my mailbox number five with the stiff key because somebody rammed a parcel into it and it's made the lock dodgy. Nothing, no post today and I shuffle to the lift where I press the button and it takes me up to the first floor where I live comes in here and Max is excited to see me, he's actually really excited to see me, he's not curled up like he's gone to sleep, he jumps all over me and he's happy to see his owner, because I'm Max's owner now. So I, I get into my flat, um, my, app, my Amazon app is on, which I left before I went out, uh, and everything's fine as I left it. And I've just got into my flat and I'm going to relax and eat my banoffee pie and later on take Max out for a walk and I've got to get up really, really early tomorrow morning to walk to the doctor's. Got to walk. I could get a taxi because my, my mum's obviously given me £20 in that Easter card. I could get a taxi, right? But by the time you wait for a taxi to arrive and all that hullabaloo, it only takes 20 minutes to walk to the, to the doctors. The hardest thing is for me to get up about half past six, seven in the morning. It's difficult for me. 
and I'll walk Max when I come back. But they've given me an appointment really, really early in the morning, you know. And I need to see a doctor face to face. So one appointment at the time, I've got an eye test soon made, eye test. That's coming up. I've got to, they want me to go up to the pain clinic in London in April. So I had a reminder this morning on my phone at 12.25, your appointment is booked at Vision Express. So I've got an eye test coming up as well. And coming home, it was like a scene out of Tokyo Drift. No joke, he was like doing some funny turns in that taxi. It was like he was out of Tokyo Drift and I've watched that. I mean, it was, what was going on? And there was a car coming down the other way with 666 on it. When I just got out of my, my mum had actually said in the flat that Derek was the devil. She said it in Double Gardens. And I, as I'm coming out of the flat, going past the Hen and Chickens pub in Upper Luton Road, there is a car with 666 on it coming towards the taxi. And she said that my father Derek was the devil. Derek being Satan, she said. She actually said it. And I'm not lying. Because as I was sat in her flat, I was actually doing a little video. And she actually said it while I was doing a little video that Derek was Satan. I've got, I've got proof that my mother said that Derek was Satan. On my phone now. The plainest day. I'm just going through my phone, but it's it's been one of those days like I'm in some kind of movie. It it has, and it's felt like I'm been in some kind of movie. Just, just have. Right, so if you just hang on a moment. through my phone I was actually taping something I was taping something off the telly and I happened to catch my mum saying that Derek was Satan so I've got my mum saying that Derek was Satan and then when I get in the taxi me Janestra, 
Crystal gets in the taxi, there is a car coming towards the taxi with 666 on it. After my mum had said that Derek was Satan. And I've actually caught her saying that. So, she was also having a conversation about witchcraft. Um, and I was just, I'm sat in there, but obviously your brain takes it in. Whether you don't want to listen to what's being said or not. Like brains, somebody's brain. She was talking about Priscilla Presley. Uh, Priscilla took Elvis away. Um, Priscilla is full of cosmetic surgery. And um, I, there was a reference when I first came to Chatham in 2008 of my dad being Elvis. And um, my mum called me Priscilla. So Priscilla's full of cosmetic surgery. I'm 54 and I have had no cosmetic surgery. And when, when it was when I, when, after what my mum had said, that I was coming in the taxi down the upper Luton Road, along the Luton Road, that I realised that it was, people had been listening to that conversation. They'd been listening to it. Listening to that conversation that was supposed to be private between me and my mum, and if my mum needs help and she's not well and she's not getting it, to make fun out of somebody like that is not nice. They're listening. Derek's Satan, is he? Well, Derek's dead. And I don't think people can actually come back from the dead, can they? Can people come back from the dead? Has anyone met somebody that's come back from the dead? Um, I think that they're using an old lady, because my mum's, she's nearly 80, as a form of entertainment when she needs help. She needs proper help. As I've said, mum, do you want to keep living like this or would you like to you know, rest somewhere and, and have a bit of peace? Then rather being used for somebody's entertainment like I am. And it happened to my dad. They used to laugh at my mum and dad together. In fact, my dad was a very dangerous man. He'd killed, he'd murdered. And to, to, to laugh, laugh at somebody that was absolutely dangerous and psychotic, they're psychotic themselves. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I'm telling you now that I am going to, to form a portfolio of proof that I am speaking the truth and that my mother called Derek Satan <sighs> calling me mad and she the blondes the blondes that took my blood who hurt me this needs to stop before someone gets seriously harmed. And it's not funny. See you later. <laughs>